let's talk about the idea of human beings being created in God's image. A key passage here is Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So notice a few things. Whereas God created each of the animals according to his kind, according to his classification or category or species, God creates humankind in his image. We are created according to God's kind. We are created in a in a different category than the rest of creation. We are created in his image. The image here, uh, the word in Hebrew comes from the, the root word to carve something out or to cut something out and could refer to a carved likeness. This word image becomes uh, later on associated with you know, the whole problem of idolatry, worshiping images, worshiping idols, and so on. Uh, we're created in God's image, also his likeness, meaning to be like. Um, and used together, then, we can say that man, humanity, is a representation of God and is like God in certain respects. We are like God. We are in the likeness of God in certain respects. Well, how are we like God? Well, verse 26 tells us that we are given dominion over the animals. Um, God himself has dominion. He governs the creation. Here, a measure of governance is delegated to humankind. Verse 27 uh, tells us that humans are social, relational beings, created male and female. It is not good to be alone. And verse 28, we are created to be in, in relationship with God, and our mandate is to fill the earth under, under God's governance. So, <clears throat> there's in certain respects in our relationality, in our personalness, um, in our role, we are like God and in God's image. Now let's take a minute to look at the temple background of this image language. I think to understand what it means to be in the image of God um, requires to to think a little bit about the temple of God. In the ancient Near East, in the ancient world, people built temples uh, to all kinds of gods. And when the temple was finished being built, the first thing they would do is put an image of the god in the temple. And the Hebrew scriptures portrays the whole earth as God's temple. God's temple is not located at a particular address, but the whole earth is the temple of the Lord. Uh, we see in Scripture that the, the whole cosmos, the whole created order, is described in terms of a building. For example, in Proverbs 24, verses 3 and 4, 
By wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Now compare that with Proverbs 3, verses 19 and 20. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the deeps broke open and the clouds dropped down the dew. This is known in Hebrew poetry as a kind of a parallelism where the imagery of one thing is, is used to explain something else. So here, it is the Lord is creating the earth. But in another text that's also alluding to creation, the language is changed to that of a building. So in Hebrew thinking, the earth, the whole earth, is kind of like a building. It is the Lord's temple. Um, words like founded and established, those are architectural terms that refer to the the construction of a building. Job 38, 4, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Uh, tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurement? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning star sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? So here's architectural language applied to creation. Creation is a building. What kind of a building is it? It's a temple. The world is God's house. Um, in the ancient world, temple dedications uh, often lasted for seven days. That was very common. And during those seven days, the functions of the temple would be proclaimed. The furniture, um, the instruments would all be installed. The priests would take up their role. And at the end, the deity would be brought into the temple and take, it, take up its, its rest. This was the terminology that was used. Well, the Lord, um, we can kind of see some of that um, coming to us in Genesis chapter 1, don't we? Where creation is over a seven-day period, and at the end, God himself takes his rest. Uh, look at Isaiah 66, 1 and 2. Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. What is the house that you have built for me, that you would build for me? And what is the place of my rest? All these things my hand has made. And so all these things came to be, declares the Lord. But this is the one to whom I will look, he who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. So the Lord here is, is chastising those who are rebuilding the temple this is after the Babylonian exile. They come back to Israel. They're rebuilding the temple. And there's a sense in which God chastises them because creation is already God's dwelling. And whereas they're filled with pride at what they're doing, God chastises their pride and says, do you really think I need this building to dwell in? Um, I do not dwell in a house built by human hands. So, I mean, the physical temple was built at God's command. It was to illustrate and be, um, an, uh, you know, an example or a, a reminder of the fact that the whole earth was the Lord's temple. Right? So, I mean, this is how God operates. You think of tithing. Um, the point of tithing is not that 10% belongs to God and 90% belongs to us, but God 
calls us to the discipline of tithing is a reminder that 100% of what we have belongs to him. The Sabbath is established not because that's God's day and then the, the other six days we can do whatever we want, but the Sabbath is established to remind us that every day belongs to the Lord. And in the same way, the temple is established as a reminder that the whole created order is God's dwelling place. And that's why the temple itself is filled with images of nature on the curtains. There's, you know, the, the colors of nature are used and so on because the temple becomes a microcosm of the created order as a reminder that the whole creation is God's temple. So why is it so important? Why have we dealt, dwelt so much on this idea that the whole created order is God's temple? Because, as we mentioned, after a pagan temple was built, the first thing that happened was that an image of the God was placed in the temple. And the purpose of that image was to communicate something about the nature of the God. Well, when God finished creating the temple world, the first thing he did was place an image of himself in the temple. But what is that image? It's human beings. We are the image that is placed in the temple of God, in the temple earth. Not a graven image, but living images.